what happens when a person becomes so obsessed they unravel? When they commit a heinous act that becomes unforgivable? When all lines are blurred and all lines are crossed, they become uncivil. When hate emerges to darkness and enrages their soul, they become unhinged. What's up everybody? How y'all doing? It is your girl your diva and knowledge lady mocha representing mocha's ladies lounge. Hope everybody's doing good. You're doing well. I hope my theme music did not scare you. <laughs> yes, this is my unhinged series. And of course, you know, um, I want to welcome you to another episode of Unhinged. A series in which I discuss past and present crimes that have devastated families, scarred communities, and destroyed legacies, and unfulfilled dreams. These are stories in which although bridges are burned, but lessons are often learned. When red flags are often overlooked, changes in character become unnoticed. We now present Unhinged series with successful NBA player known as Lorenzen Wright. So... Ladies, I have to tell y'all, Lorenzen Wright was six foot eleven. Chocolate hog and dolls fine of handsomeness. And he definitely had the looks, the swag, and most importantly, skills on the court. The ladies love some Mr. Wright. But we will get into Mr. Wright being a ladies' man later, later on um, as we continue throughout this series. So, Lorenzen Wright was born as Lorenzen Vern Yanane Wright on November 4th, 1975. I hope I did not butcher his name. However, he was born and raised in Oxford, Mississippi. Mr. Wright played for Lafayette High School in Mississippi before moving to Memphis, where he spent his senior year playing for Booker T. Washington High School. Wright's father, Herb, was once a professional basketball player who once tried out for Utah Jazz, but was unfortunately shot in his back during his career as a Memphis police officer when Lorenzen was only seven years old. This unfortunate incident left his father paralyzed and wheelchair bound for life. Wright has a very profound history of talent and successful career as a phenomenal basketball player. Wright was selected seventh overall by the Los Angeles Clippers in the 1996 NBA draft out of the University of Memphis. The following season, on December 26, 1997, Wright scored a season-high 32 points and grabbed 15 rebounds in an overtime loss to the Los Angeles Lakers. Wright then moved on to the Atlanta Hawks in 1999. That's when I graduated high school, y'all. Anyway, he was traded to the Memphis Grizzlies on June 27, 2001. On January 6, 2003, Wright scored 20 points and grabbed 14 rebounds and a 106-102 win over the New Orleans Hornets. Wright returned to the Hawks back in 2006. On February 16, 2008, he was involved in a multiplayer trade going from Atlanta to Sacramento. He held career averages of 8.0 points and 6.4 rebounds per game, playing in 778 including 793 playoff NBA games over 13 seasons. With all of the wonderful barriers that Mr. Wright had accomplished, there would be struggles and tragedies lying ahead. In 2000, Wright along with three other, in the year of 2000, Wright along with three other Memphis NBA players provided financial assistance to Travis Butler, a Memphis orphan whose tragic story garnered national attention. But neither did he know Three years later, in March of 2003, he would be encountering his own tragedies. He would lose his 11-month-old daughter due to SIDS. Instead of harboring his pain after the loss, Wright used his loss and founded 
the Sierra Simone Wright Scholarship Fund after the death of his infant daughter, Sierra, in March of 2003. The scholarship fund granted an annual scholarship to a Memphis high school seniors with plans to attend a college or university. However, as we all know, y'all, success comes with its own troubles, and not only was trouble brewing with finances, but also within his marriage. While playing for the AAU, Wright began seeing Shira Robinson, his coach's daughter. In 1994, Wright began playing for the University of Memphis, and Shira became pregnant with their first child. They then married in 98 and welcomed their second child in 1999. The same year Wright was traded to the Atlanta Hawks. In 2001, Wright moved home after being traded to the Memphis Grizzlies for he would play for for the next five years. So Shira and the kids moved with him to Coralville, Tennessee, a wealthy enclave just, week, just west of the city. By 2002, they had seven children, continuing to expand their families with three beautiful girls and four handsome boys. Now we know that Mr. Wright was not only a great player on the court, but he was also a married man and a father of seven being a great player in the streets. Like most athletes that travel frequently on the road, hooking up with the groupies at the after parties and hotel lobbies, success brings out the worst qualities in a person, y'all know, because of so much temptation when you're out on the road and you're amongst all of these women and you're hardly ever with your wife. So Shira became more and more fed up with Mr. Wright's male Jezebel ways. You know, a man of his looks, his swag, his success, the chances of him being faithful was a long shot from reality. And keep in mind, Mr. Wright was only what? in his 30s around that time 31 32 so absolutely so nevertheless still recovering from the loss of their daughter sierra and lorenzen's player phase they it became a pivotal point in their marriage their relationship became very volatile y'all there was a lot of arguments and fights and you know the drama continued to escalate according to friends and family who had witnessed this become a continuing issue amongst the both of them. So arguments and fights continued to escalate, causing more friction. Lorenzen had made the decision to divorce Shira in 2010. So when he lived in Atlanta, Shira stayed in Memphis with the children where they were enrolled in school. Needless to say, Lorenzen filing that divorce and being single, living his best life, it left a bitter taste in Shira's mouth. You know, knowing you're in a whole nother city and you're the main parent practically doing everything while even though you're receiving this allotment, nice size allotment once a month, just knowing your husband, the father of your seven children is out there living his best life. So, However, Lorenzen was soon discovered that living the single life wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. And he even became very transparent, admitting this, you know, um, to a lot of his close friends. You know, that he would rather go back home and make things right with his wife and his family and basically work on repairing his marriage. So he realized the streets had nothing much to offer but a good time that was short-lived. And he realized he needed something more meaningful. So basically, in the words of Joe, I don't want to be a player no more. You know, he wanted to retire from being a player and go back to being a full-time father and devoted husband. So, July 22nd, 2010. This when things begin to get interesting and change for the worse. Lorenzen's mother, Deborah Marion, called the Collierville Police Department to report her son missing. He was in town for his sister's baby shower, but never showed up. It was out of his character to be in town and not stop by and see his family, not answer his phone, not check on his people, and, and even more so to skip out on family events without any prior notification. Um... Mr. Wright was very family oriented, so he never would miss out 
on any type of, you know, special family events, some such as, you know, his sister's baby shower. So this became a red flag, especially to his mother, uh, Mrs. Marion, who knew her son better than anybody. This was way out of character. So Lorenzen usually stayed with Shira and the kids when he was in Memphis. When Shira was contacted by the family regarding his whereabouts, she seemed, you know, vague and unconcerned. You know, to be a wife, you should be panicking, freaking out, um, worrying to death. There's nothing to be worried about, she said casually. I'm sure he's just gone. He'll come back sometime. This is what Lorenz does, she implied. No real concern or compassion. Friends said Lorenzen had dinner with his old frat brothers from the University of Memphis and later went with them to watch one of his sons play basketball. During the game, Lorenzen received a flurry of text messages from his ex-wife. Shira sent Lorenzen multiple nude pictures attempting to entice him like, okay, come on, come get this, come get you some, you know, just... Kept, you know, sending all these new photos, you know, to, uh, you know, persuade Lorenzen to come over and see her. So Lorenzen and his son was dropped off at Shira's house around 10 p.m. When four days passed by and no one heard from Lorenzen, his family contacted the authorities. Now, you know, um, Lorenzen's mother was relentless. She felt something in her spirit. She knew something was up. It's that gut feeling that only mothers who ever lost a child can totally relate to. It's a feeling you can't shake. It's a feeling you just cannot, you know, delete. It's, it's very, very haunting to the spirit. So, Miss Marion was not going to let up at nothing until she found out what was going on with her son Lorenzen. Investigators spoke with Cheryl, who said she had last seen Lorenzen on the night of July 18th. She claimed he was carrying money and drugs and later left with two armed men. Cheryl also alleged she overheard Lorenzen on his cell phone saying he was going to flip something for $110,000. This was a false narrative to paint Lorenzen out to be, you know, basically make it appear as if, you know, he was involved in some type of drug deal going bad. Nevertheless, during the investigation, Lorenzo's friends and family told investigators that both of the rights had been having affairs. Uh, there was also severe financial difficulties after Lorenzo's um, retirement. Cars had been repossessed and things just continued to go downhill. So, um, basically, um, money troubles were at an all-time high. So, investigators saw his last outgoing phone call was to 911 in Germantown, Tennessee at 12, 12 a.m. on July 19th. And this, y'all, is where I am going to play um, the audio and I'm going to interject um, just to keep the copyright down to a minimum. So this is going to be the actual phone call in which Lorenzen himself was fighting for his life. He knew something was up once he came to this location and he just knew instantly something was not right but we're going to go ahead and play the footage fair use fair use Fair use, fair use for educational purposes only. Hello? Hello? Fair use. And that was the end of the phone call. As you can see, um, he didn't even get a chance to... Um, explain what was going on what was happening the gunshots were very rapid and quick and instant so that was the last thing um that would be his last memory before his ultimate passing is that 
he basically was in a situation in which he was alone um, by himself and he knew right away that something was terribly going to happen to him and no one was there to um, basically aid or assist him. And um, unfortunately, investigators determined the call came from Southeast Memphis. After a brief search, they found Lorenzen Wright's body badly decomposed in a wooded spot. Um, on July 28, 2010, he was 34 years old. His body had been rotting for nine days and left to nothing but bones in July weather, according to investigators. At the scene, shell casings from a 9mm was present, implying more than one shooter had to be to the location at that time when that incident went down. Lorenzo was still wearing his jewelry and had a large sum of cash on him, ruling out the possibility of robbery. So they was not concerned about his jewelry, not concerned about his money. They wanted his life. Lorenzen had been shot five, oops, unalived, five times, you know, um, twice in the head, twice in the chest, and once in the firearm, according to autopsy reports. Trying to be careful with my wording, y'all, because, um, you know, YouTube is so picky and they quickly demonetize the video. But nevertheless, Lorenzen's family told investigators that the Wright's financial woes were largely the result of Shira's spending habits. After Lorenzen's death, Shira received more than one million in life insurance money. Within 10 minutes, she has spent, check this out, y'all, 970000 so you could imagine how his family felt knowing that, you know, Lorenzen's life was taken. And at the time, there was no suspects, but yet his ex-wife is moving on happily, happy-go-lucky and spending um, the money from his death. And also his family knew that lie about him you know, um, making that narrative she tried to push that, you know, he um, was making some type of drug deal or, you know, um, had something illegally going on. His family knew better than that and the community knew better than that because Lorenzen was always a giver and he was always a very ambitious guy. And he would never resort to doing such a thing to make a living by getting involved in any you know, bad drug deals or any other bad investments for that matter. Credit Karma Vaz, a place where financial progress can happen at the speed of delight. Here we help you achieve your money goal. To add insult to injury, y'all, Shira's um, 
cell phone records were subpoenaed and showed she had been trying to set Lorenzen up for weeks to visit her in Memphis with sexually explicit text messages at the same time. She was also in communication with two other men, Jimmy Martin and Billy Ray Turner. So you have to keep in mind, she's sending him all these, these nude pics, knowing that, you know what I mean, Lorenzen still has a thing for her. You know what I'm saying? So she's using her JJ to bait him to come over. Knowing all of this is a, a plot to make Lorenzen let his guard down and, you know, feel that he's safe to go be with her like that. And she used it to her advantage, which is a really sad situation. Um, Shira had exchanged a series of suspicious, appeared to be coded messages with Jimmy in the days before the murder. Martin was Shira's cousin and was currently out on bail for the second degree murder of his girlfriend, Martin, no, Martha Jean Bowens. Turner, meanwhile, had met Shira at church and also did her landscaping work. Turner's phone uh, was found and located in the same area as Lorenzen on the night of the of um, Lorenzen being unalived. I'm trying to be careful with my with my choice words, right? So, um, detectives already knew that uh, Mr. Martin was very well involved. However, um, Martin was willing to see if he can get a deal, being that he was already facing 20 years for unaliving his girlfriend, Miss Bowers, in exchange for them shortening or reducing his time with the death of his girlfriend. Now, if this is a sick and twisted, I don't know what else is, okay? So he was already facing time for unaliving somebody. So he's willing to, to snitch and throw everybody, including Shira, under the bus who was involved with the death of Lorenzen so he could get some time reduced down for the death of somebody else he already unalived prior. Now, I want y'all to check this out too, right? As if things can get any worse... Shira had the audacity, y'all, to actually put out a book called Mr. Tell Me Anything, in which she basically self-snitches on herself. And she's narrating in this book, um, basically, everything she stated in the book sounds so similar to what she was currently going through within her marriage to Mr. Wright. Now, if this is not given, you got issues, who would want to put out a book, even make up or make anything sound close to the case of your ex-husband being unalive? Knowing detectives, knowing investigators, knowing he has fans, knowing there's people that's going to read this book because um, there's so much controversy surrounding Mr. Wright's you know, death at this time, and still there was nothing that had been confirmed, so her putting out this book only made matters worse. Now, keep in mind, she attempted to sell this book in public. She had public the, she had publicized the book on January 1st, 2015. And basically, she called herself trying to sell the book on Amazon, right? So I'm going to read the little book overview of what she describes as to what the book is going to be about and y'all would know from there if this was one of the dumbest things she could have absolutely did but maybe her conscience was just eating her up that she had to write a book she had to self-consciously speak upon it because that's how much her conscience is killing her and she used this book which ultimately Ended up being the biggest piece to the puzzle that helped the detectives and the uh, investigators really get down to the steak and potato of the case at hand. This is what the book says, y'all, right? Falling in love with the same man of her dreams. Over and over was not a difficult task for Sharon Robertson. She had cherished Mr. Tell Me Anything so long that, their fra that her fragile heart didn't even know how to love him. After six years, the couple settles into a troubled marriage. Despite the inherited challenges of parenting and relating to their obvious differences, they continue on. With the constant chaos surrounding women, 
new acquaintances, family, and greed, their efforts will soon appear to be ultimately in vain. Combined with the newfound lies and deception, she finds herself questioning his commitment. Her belief in true love propels her to fight for what she had envisioned from the start. But despite her nurturing efforts, corruption and deceit took their stable places in his life. A breaking point is reached. Don't this sound familiar, y'all? She makes a life-altering decisions. Does it work out for her good? Did all his lies finally catch up to him? Would he or she pay the ultimate price? Now, who in the world will put a book out about their marriage, knowing your husband was just not too long ago unalived? But that's what she did. Y'all, I'm going to read a few of these comments. Um based on the people who either purchased the book or were familiar with the case surrounding the book. So you can tell a lot of people had it in for her, and righteously so. One person um, basically said, oh, I hate when they do that. Uh, I'm trying to do my series. Um, one person um, put in review, Mr. Tell Me Everything is a fictional story about real life. It's like a confessional, someone telling a story to cleanse themselves of the real crime in the book. The bottom line is what goes around comes around. Karma is a bitch, and now the character in Mr. Tell Me Everything in Real Life is in Memphis facing a murder charge. Going on to the next review comment. I only purchased this book because I want to see if it will reveal any clues regarding the murder of her ex-husband. However, I do share the same thought as another purchaser's review of this book. And that is um, that this book should not be supported, especially given the fact that she has now been arrested along with another individual in connection with her ex-husband's murder. Well, I suppose if she plans on publishing a continuation of this book, it will be done from a prison cell. Very sad situation and especially sad for their children. Um, somebody else put in the review, I hope the sequel is ultimately released, but understand why it wasn't. The, this book speaks volumes as to her narcissistic state of mind and unfortunate tools of manipulation. Too bad she could not mature into a woman who felt more worthy than sex money and able to accept that their marriage had ran its course. This is a cautionary tale about how people bind themselves to relationships and become resentful when they end despite all desperate measures in between. Note, we don't own people. They are not our property. Live and let live. Somebody needs to tell Melody's ex-husband Martell that. But anyway. Um, I could never find hours to read the book. I read this book in one day. It talks uh, more about this person cheating on her. Now this person who wrote this book is in jail for the murder of her husband. I wonder how she put something in this book that hits close to home. Um, somebody... I guess who purchased the book like two years after it was publicized. The sequel to the book is unfolding on the national news. We're seeing it play out in real time. Wow. This is a great story for women who have ever felt unworthy. It exposes how deceitful men can be. You have to love yourself. This story proves that. And trust me, people will never change. So as you can see, um, Art imitates life, um, if y'all ever heard of that. Um, so basically, she, I guess her conscience was just eating her up so bad, she had to publicize a book um, pertaining everything she was going through. And I don't know how she felt comfortable doing that, knowing that um, Lorenzen has family, knowing he has fans. But that is what she did, y'all. She chose to put that book out there. Very, very interesting. Um, back to the situation at hand. So... Um, <clears throat> Martin was Shira's cousin, and like I said, he was currently out for the second degree of his girlfriend, Martha Jean Bowens, and tried to make a side deal, um, in exchange for sharing what actually happened, um, during the untimely death of Lorenzo Wright. In 2013, Jimmy Martin was found guilty of second degree murder in 2007, death of his girlfriend, and sentenced to 20 years in prison, according to Memphis Commercial Appeal newspaper. In exchange for immunity, Martin offered to tell investigators about his involvement in the death of Lorenzo Wright. Martin said Shira had asked him to help unalive um, Lorenzo. 
Cheryl subsequently told him she and Turner had gone through with the murder and enlisted Martin to help dispose of the murder weapons in the lake. December 5th, 2017, Billy Ray Turner, 46, was arrested and charged with first degree murder and death of Lorenzo Wright. A week later, Cheryl Wright was arrested near her home in Riverside, California in December 2017 in charge of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and attempted murder. 2019 of July, Cheryl Wright, age 48, pleaded guilty to facilitation to commit murder and facilitation to commit attempted first murder and sentenced to 30 years in prison. Billy Ray Turner was found guilty of first degree murder, attempted murder, and conspiracy first murder in March 2022 and sentenced to life in prison, according to NBC News. March 2022, Shira Wright's request for parole was denied. Her next eligibility will be in the year of 2027. Despite all of this, y'all, Lorenzo not being alive to see his children blossom into the beacons of light he wished them to be, all children are now adults and seem to be doing well. Lorenzo Wright Jr., who is also just as handsome and good-looking as his father, his firstborn is now a basketball coach and fitness expert. Twins Lamar and Shamar Wright both played for the Cougars at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. Lawson and Sophia are Lorenzo's youngest children and were born in 2007 of the two. Lawson prefers staying off of social media, unlike her sister Sophia, who has a social media presence after her mother was in prison. Lauren stepped in to play the motherly role for her little sister and has since been staying with her in California. Everything in the series is alleged and based off my opinion in addition to multiple sources. Anyone who would like to contest or clear any details or possible inaccurate information concerning this series Please feel free to reach me via email, which uh, would be in the thumbnail. If not, um, I'll leave it to the bottom. My heart goes out to all individuals who have been affected by this unfortunate tragedy. Rest in peace to Mr. Lorenzen Wright. So, y'all, getting into the issue at hand, sounds like to me, Shira Wright had became very scorned due to the fact that she was with Lorenzen at the peak of his career, before the fame, before the success. And as we know, like most women who have been in a situation, whether they were married to athletes, rappers, producers, unfortunately, temptation does come with the territory. When you have these men that are gone from home several months out the year, um, they're constantly on the road traveling. Um, there's a lot of temptation. They're indulging in alcohol, drugs, um, you know, all the temptations of what it's like to be in the limelight. And um, Shira, as she'd been more mature, uh, understood that eventually all of this was going to play out. Um, that at some point in time, Lorenzo was going to crash and burn. Um, we all know that many celebrities who have indulged in this type of lifestyle, regardless of what their profession is, um, it usually comes to an head. It comes to a head. Everything comes with an expiration date. And um, Lorenzen did realize towards the end that um, everything that fame had to offer was not all of what he realized it was cracked up to be. And sometimes it's difficult as it is. You have to allow these men, but that takes a level of maturity that a lot of women just are not anointed or built to do. You have to allow them to go out there and experiment and explore. Because the more you try to stop them, you fighting with them or arguing with them, you don't need to leave, you don't need to be in the streets, you don't need so and so. Sometimes you have to let them go out there and let life show them that you think this is what you want. When in actuality, you're already blessed. You have a beautiful wife. You have beautiful children. While you're out here fornicating with groupies, you know, they're using you, taking advantage of you. And even though you think you're getting over, um, eventually it's going to catch up. Lorenzen probably was going to soon discover and that, that he needed to be a full-time dad and a devoted husband. 
before she can give it a chance to see if Lorenzen was going to come to his senses, she snuffed him um, out of having a future. And even though people divorce all the time, maybe he would have eventually realized that I should be working things out with my wife. Plenty of women who have been with their rapper boyfriends. Um, Simone been married to LL Cool J for many years. She went through the groupie thing. Um, Snoop Dogg's wife, um, she went through multiple groupies. Um, you know, Sha I think her name is Sha Shantae Brodus. Many women, uh, you know, uh, Magic Johnson, you know, he even caught, you know, uh, a sexually transmitted disease and his wife is still with him. I mean, it's many women who have overcame it and never should have resorted to her unaliving this man because this man was not only her husband, but he was the father of her children. All seven of her children are without a father. All her grandchildren are without a grandfather. You know, if, if any of you women look back and think about all of the ham any type of pain or betrayal you went through with the man, imagine had you unalived him. Would you have been at the level of success where you are? Would you have been at a great journey in your life? You have never would have known that had you been incarcerated in somebody's prison doing life. Had you been unalived in the process of unaliving him. We just don't know how God is going to work things out in our favor. Um, and we don't know how God can change things around. You know, it's called not making permanent decisions based off your temporary emotions. We have to be very mindful of that. Uh, or else it can have some very devastating consequences. And the bad part about it is her choices has affected many generations to come. Like I said, it's not just her children. It's her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren. And as you can see, you know, Cheryl Wright has aged drastically. Um, I'm sure had um, Lorenzen Wright still been alive, um, he too, you know, would have aged. And, you know, life does um take this course the things you're so angry and upset about you never know how it's going to turn around you never know how god is going to fix it you know and it's just very sad because um lorenzo's mother has gone through a lot um the children at one point in time did not want to have anything to do with their father's mother which is their grandmother you know, um, due to the fact that they were angry that their grandmother was fighting for their father's, um, for, for, for their father's, um, justice, you know, and it, and you can't really be, become upset, uh, upset with the children because, you know, that's their mother and the only parent that's living is the mother, even though she was the one who caused the death of their father. It's a sticky situation because you they you want them to be mad with their mother, but that's the parent that's living and their father is not here. So children are gonna always love, you know, their mom their mother, their parents, you know. Um and I'm sure psychologically there's no telling what all they really had to go through. So a couple of times, you know, um Lorenza's mother you know, I had to take a lot of blows, had to go through a lot of um, emotional turmoils knowing that her grandchildren resented her um, for, for, for um, her fighting for her sons, who in turn is their father's rights. So it was a very, very sticky situation. So while um, Shira was incarcerated, you know, when she was going through her hearing because Lorenzo's mother did not miss a beat. She was at every hearing. She was at every indictment. She was making sure that her son was going to get the justice he deserved. And she, at one point in time, even spoke in one of the hearings and said, you know, I know that me and Cheryl will never, you know, bond like that or ever be close like that. But I need her to take the leash off of my grandchildren because it's bad enough I already lost my son. I want to be close to my grandchildren. Um, I don't want to lose them in the process of them being angry with me because I'm trying to fight for justice for my son 
which is their father. I'm not saying they should not love their mother. They not should not support their mother. They should not see their mother. But at the same time, I'm a mother like she is. And I'm not going to just sit here and let my son's death go in vain. While she does not serve any time. Yeah, Miss Gerber, that's her name. While she doesn't serve any time knowing she has something to do with my son's death. And she played a major part in it. She was the one who set it up. So can y'all only imagine all the tension and drama and strife. I'm sure Shira has parents as well. So this unfortunate situation, it really caused a lot of division. It really caused a lot of confusion. It caused a lot of chaos and strife. You know, and this is just basically off a woman that was angry about her husband being a player. And again, this is something women go through all the time. And the fact that he divorced her, that made her even more angry. But I think the biggest part, because I don't want to sound like, you know, it was just the reason being this terrible husband and she just couldn't take it no more. I also believe that greed played a major part. Look how she blew through his insurance money. Look how she blew through, you know, um, you know, all of the finances. She, she, she was not grieving very long, if not at all, because she was running through this man's money like water. Not caring that he still had family that was grieving. It's a very sad situation, y'all. But, um, you know, thank God the children were still able to, um, you know, become normal citizens, become, you know, still stable, you know, minded individuals after, you know, something so tragic, you know. So I, I'm, I'm glad that um, for them that they did not allow such a tragic situation. Um. To, to really mentally and psychologically destroy them. Now, I also found out, too, that Shira Wright did remarry. She did remarry um, at some point in time before um, she had served time. Now, it's still not certain to this day if she is still married um to the deputy because I was um from what I had retrieved she was married um to a deputy to an officer so she did remarry so there's no certain word um or specific information in which I could locate um to see if she is still currently married to this individual or not but she did remarry you know so she happily moved on with her life. And this is the reason why, you know, um, Miss Deborah Lorenzo's mother fought so hard for her um, son's justice because she saw that um, her daughter-in-law really did not have no care in the world as to how um, Lorenzo's murder would be solved, resolved. And for good reason, because she was part of it, you know. So that's basically what it boils down to, y'all. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in with the Unhinged series. Um, definitely let me know what y'all think about the situation at hand. Do you think that um, Shira was just this, this poor, defenseless, scorned woman who was doing everything in her power to keep her marriage together and she just had a husband who... Um, did not have no respect for her, did not have any compassion for her, and did not value the marriage and, you know, tarnished it by getting going out here and getting involved with other women, knowing that he had a full-pledged family? Or do you think this was really a matter of greed? That once Lorenzen divorced her, she knew she was not going to have access um to the lifestyle well not as much knowing she was not going to be able to spin and spurge like she used to be able to do so was it greed or was it a grieving woman who just um 
couldn't take any more of her husband cheating on her and disrespecting her. Um, anyway, y'all, leave y'all comment below. Let me know what y'all think before y'all exit. Hit the like button. I would gladly appreciate that. My next Unhinged series, I'm going to be talking about an Instagram model by the name of Mercedes Moore, who was taking advantage of a trick who obviously became unhinged after spending all of his money on her. And he realized that uh, she was never going to be with him. And this indeed resulted in her losing her life. So I'm going to be doing my next unhinged series on Mercedes Moore. So stand by for that. And my usual content as always. Anybody who wants to donate to my channel or my movement. I would gladly appreciate it. Other than that y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. Y'all take care. And again thank you for tuning in to Unhinged.